and for your blessing. We pray you would move by your Holy Spirit in each of our hearts. Lord, we pray for the reading of your word later and for uh, Rob or whoever it is is going to bring the word tonight. Have your hand upon them, Lord. Thank you for each other, Lord. Thank you for the preciousness of the fellowship we have with each other. Lord, we know we're not perfect. But Lord, we thank you that in you one day we will be. So Lord, we commit everything to you tonight and we leave it at your feet. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, you'll have to mute yourself again, Paul. There you go. There you go. Thanks. Am I meant to be big screen now, Bri? You are, mate. Because we're still the Paul. Oh, well, I'm not. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, tonight we're going to turn to um, Psalm 61. So if you've got your Bibles with you, follow along in, in Psalm 61. And I've entitled it from the first line of the psalm, Hear my cry, O God. So let's read Psalm 61. Um, psalm written by David. And in our time that we've got, I'm just going to focus on the first four verses tonight. So let's read the whole psalm first. Psalm 61. To the choir master with stringed instruments of David. Verse 1. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings, Selah. For you, O oh God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear my, your name. Prolong the life of the king. May his years endure to all generations. May he be enthroned forever before God. Appoint steadfast love and faithfulness to watch over him. So I will ever sing praises to your name as I perform my vows day after day. Well, David was not immune, was he, to the ups and downs of, of life. Remember back in the day when we were in church and I was going through the life of David? Um, well, it was like eight months ago in the evening. He was the young shepherd boy who had courageously and fiercely fought, the, you know, the nine-foot Goliath. That was a very, very much an up in his life, wasn't it? And then he defeated enemy after enemy and he was hailed as a hero and adored by many, wasn't he? But they were the ups and there were many, but there were also many downs. We all know about the, the infamous adultery um, that ultimately led to Uriah's murder and, and Nathan the prophet confronting him saying, you are that man, David, when he told him a parable of a lamb. And also he, he was often fleeing from Saul and also his son Absalom wanted him dead. So he knew the ups and he, he knew the downs. His life, a little bit like ours, was a bit of a roller coaster. So all of us in our lives have known times of joy, haven't we? At least I hope we have. And times of sadness, times of contentment and, and times of frustration, times when you're elated. And times when you're surrounded by a black cloud of despair and depression. And I think, I think we've experienced all of those emotions over this last eight months, in the last eight COVID months, haven't we? Now, David, when he wrote this, was experiencing one of the low points in his life. We're not entirely sure which one. There's a bit of debate over it. And as I said, there were quite a few. In this psalm, he is, he's lamenting as his heart is faint within him. So what did he do about it? Did he just sit there and, and hope it would all go away? Did he bury his head in the sand? No. He turned to God. And in Psalm 61, he reveals his heart to us as he pleads with the Lord, his Savior. Verse 1, he says, Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. What an appeal. David, when he wrote this, was, was, was a desperate man. Verse 2, from the end of the earth I call to you, when my heart is faint, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. His inner man, his heart was, was overwhelmed. He was faint-hearted. He, his problem was too much for him alone to bear. So he cried out in prayer, hear my cry, O God, listen 
to my prayer. Hear me. Listen to me. He was earnest in seeking after God in, in this prayer. We sense his urgency, don't we, as his enemies pursued him, whoever they were at this time. This was no half-hearted prayer. I don't know whether you've caught that program on, I think it's on BBC Two at the moment, about the RNLI, uh, the rescue service. And um, each week they just go through a number of rescues. And, and the one that was on this week was a, about a guy who was surfing with his wife, his wife and his kids were at the shore and he was, he was surfing out at just, just probably a hundred meters. Uh, anyway, so a riptide got hold of him and he knew he was in trouble. He couldn't get back into shore and he was screaming, screaming at his wife for help. You know, he was earnestly seeking help. This was an urgent request. And there's a sense of that in, in David here. This was an urgent request. He needed help and he, and he wanted God to hear that. So we too, when we're, when we're troubled, we need, to, we need to take a leaf out of David's book and seek our God earnestly in prayer. He is the one who can help, which is why David was going to him. David cried in verse 2, didn't he, the second part? Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Lead me to you, Lord. I need you, Lord. You're my rock. I need to be in your presence in, in a place of safety and security on the rock that is higher than my problem. Lead me to you, O oh Lord. David's prayer was very specific. Lead me, O oh God, into the very presence of yourself. Lead me to the rock of my salvation. Only when I look upon him is the essence of what he's saying. Only when uh, I see the glory of the Lamb, only when I see his beauty, his radiance, his magnificence, will I find comfort on the rock that is higher than I am. This was no formal, repetitive prayer. This was an earnest plea to be found in the security of the Lord's presence on that rock. Do you know, I often read prayers, um, the prayers of the Puritans. I don't know whether you've got this book. It's called The Valley of the Vision. And um, I'm always challenged by, by their prayers that, that are always from the heart. Let, let me just read you one. This one's called The Broken Heart. And there are similar themes to what's in, in this psalm contained in, in, in this prayer. It was, the Puritan's name is, is, is it's anonymous. All the prayers in here are anonymous. But... But anyway, listen, listen to this. I just found this moving when I read it. The prayer goes like this. Oh Lord, no day of my life has passed that has not proved me guilty in thy sight. Prayers have been uttered from a prayerless heart. Praise has often been praised from without a pray, pray, praising sound. My best services are, are filthy rags. Blessed Jesus, lead me find a comfort in thy appeasing wounds. Though my sins rise to heaven, thy merits soar above them. Though unrighteousness weighs me down to hell, thy righteousness exalts me to thy throne. All things in me call for my rejection. All things in thee plead my acceptance. I appeal from the throne of perfect justice to thy throne of boundless grace. Grant me to hear thy voice assuring me that by thy stripes I am healed, that thou wast bruised for my iniquities, that thou hast been made sin for me, that I might be righteous in thee, that my grievous sins, my manifold sins are all forgiven, buried in the ocean of thy concealing blood. I am guilty, but pardoned, lost, but saved, wandering, but found, sinning, but cleansed. Give me perpetual brokenheartedness. Keep me always clinging to thy cross. Flood me every moment with descending grace. Open to me the springs of divine knowledge, sparkling like crystal, flowing clear and unsullied through my wilderness of life. So how was your prayer compared to that this morning? 
I just, uh, that's a heartfelt prayer, isn't it? You know, as David's was here, David's heart was faint and, and he earnestly prayed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. You know, David then moves on in his prayer and he looks back on, on the good times that where he had known um, the very presence of God. He looks back at how God had always been his refuge, his strong tower, verse 3. You have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. You know, David was in the barren lands. The crisis in his life was overwhelming him. So what did he do? He remembered the strong tower of our God. He remembered the safety of finding refuge in him. He remembered the times when God had been his protection from the enemy. And it was this memory of, of what God had done in the past which would have encouraged him about the future. God did it then, and he'll do it now. So what about you and I this evening? Have you known times in the past when the Lord's blessing in your life has caused your heart to sink? Have you known truth that has made your heart rejoice? Have you known him to be, at times in your life, your shelter? Have you known him to be your strong tower when Satan fires those burning darts at you? Then remember those times if you've known them. When you're under attack again, when you remember what Jesus has done for you in the past, and you remember how important you are to him, so important that he sacrificed his life on a cross and shed his blood, remember what he did. And why he did it? Because he loves you. Remember, you're on the victory side. Remember, heaven's glory awaits. Remember the lamb that was slain for you. Remembering what Christ has done for you in the past will encourage your faint heart for the future. Well, David now goes on to reaffirm before God just how much he trusts in verse 4. He says this, Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings. I think a much better translation is found in the New King James on this one, where it, where it says there, I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. David affirms his trust, his faith before God. I will, O sovereign God, trust you as i shelter in your presence your tabernacle under your wings i think it's a it's a good practice isn't it to come to god and verbally in prayer affirm our trust in him like david did here you know we we, we can pray at lord i will love you today i i will trust you i will serve you lord with all of my strength I will love you, trust you, serve you in the ups and the downs that this day may bring as I take up my cross daily for you. You know, David reaffirmed his term, determination before God to be near to God. He reaffirmed his trust in his God. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings i'll stay close to you forever he was saying i will trust in your sovereign protection i will stay near to you and trust you so if david did it then so should we the next time the dark clouds overwhelm us lord even though these clouds are all around me i will abide in you i will trust in the shelter of your wings so to summarize then, from these first four verses, let's daily pray earnestly. Let's seek his presence, seek the rock that is higher than you and I. And let's remember his keeping hand in times past and trust him for the days ahead. And let's remember to reaffirm in prayer our desire to love him, trust him, and serve him and maybe we can do that tonight in our groups as we break off so let me read the four, first four verses again hear my cry O god listen to my prayer from the end of the earth i call to you when my heart is faint lead me to the rock that is higher than i for you have been my refuge a strong tower against the enemy let me dwell 
in your tent forever. Let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings. See you there. So, you know, it's interesting to note that David closes the psalm with, with these words, verse 8. So, what, so will I ever sing praises to your name as I perform my vows day after day? Well, let's do that now. Let's sing praises to his name in, in, in song before we come to our groups in prayer. Let's praise his name as we cast our minds back to Calvary. <laughs>